Good morning friends, I am Ashish Agrawal from Team NGO Enabler and today I will discuss on corpus donations. I understand after the amendments in the budget 2021, lot of deliberations, interpretations and arguments have been going around about the corpus donation, its utilization and taxation involved. But let me assure you, after watching this video, you will be able to completely grasp the concept of corpus donation, the intention of the government and its taxability. So be there with us till the last. Let's begin. First and foremost, to your surprise, let me tell you, corpus donation has been nowhere defined in the Income Tax Act. Yes, you heard it right. Corpus donations has been nowhere defined in the Income Tax Act. So it has to be understood in the general sense. Corpus for simple understanding means donation of permanent nature, which is somewhat like the capital of an organization. However, a donation shall qualify as corpus donation only when there is a specific written direction from the donor that such donation should form part of the corpus of the organization. You must have heard in almost every household about khajana, which usually is kept in a separate locker unused for years and might be used only in the case of emergency. That's exactly what corpus fund is all about. Though the use is unrestricted, I repeat, though the use is unrestricted, but still being permanent in nature, usually the corpus remains untouched by an organization. The limitation is on the use itself rather than the type of use. I repeat, the limitation is on the use itself rather than the type of use. So, though it can be applied for any charitable objects for all practical purposes, but at the same time, the nature is that of permanent and closed fund, which is usually taken out only in the case of emergency. You can find in the description box a format of the letter in case of corpus donation. Anyways, let's continue. We all know charitable organizations usually rely on donations or grants, but every NGO looks for any fixed source of income which will enable it to meet its daily expenditure at least. This is what the intention of the corpus donation is, which provides fixed source of income in the form of dividend or interest income on the investments made out of such funds. This is also clear from the intention of the government that wants such funds to be specifically maintained or tax such corpus with the investments specified under section 11 subsection 5. This intention has been clearly brought out in the budget 2021, though in our opinion, the intention was the same even earlier too, because one cannot use corpus fund for general charitable purposes and claim exemption. It's like claiming dual benefit. Let me explain you how. As per clause D of section 11 of section 1, income in the form of voluntary contribution made with a specific direction that they shall form part of the corpus of the trust or institution shall not be included in the total income of the previous year of the person in receipt of such income. This implies corpus donation has been specifically exempt and need not be considered while calculating the total income for 85% application. Now, if the expenses made out of such corpus is also allowed as an application, then of course it's a dual benefit to the organization because expenses incurred out of exempt income should also not be considered on the same logic. Unfortunately, in actual practice, there were many charitable organizations which were not only utilizing the corpus donation for application towards their general charitable objects, but in fact, even claiming such expenses as utilization for the purpose of threshold of mandatory 85% application of income. This was clearly beyond the intention and purpose of the law which made it exempt. Hence, this amendment was made and the intention was spelled out clearly in the law itself. So you see, after this amendment, a condition has been attached with the earlier provision of section 11 subsection 1 clause D where it says subject to the condition that such voluntary contributions are invested or deposited in one or more of the forms or modes specified in subsection 5 maintained specifically for such corpus. I repeat, voluntary contributions 
are invested or deposited in one or more of the forms or modes specified in subsection 5 maintained specifically for such corpus. This means in order to claim exemption now, the organization not only have to ensure that the corpus is not utilized, but it should also remain invested in the modes specified under section 11 subsection 5 of the act is specifically so maintained for such corpus. A point to be noted here is that as we are aware, even bank balances are covered under section 11 subsection 5. Does the intent of the legislation now is that the organization need to maintain a separate bank account for corpus fund? We will cover it in detail in our next video on practical aspects of corpus donation. Coming to explanation 4 which was inserted in section 11 subsection 1 where it says that even application out of the corpus fund shall not be allowed in the year of application but only when it is reinstated with the same amount. So if you do an in-depth analysis of the explanation, you will understand that still no restriction has been put on the utilization of corpus donation as such towards the charitable or religious purpose. The amendment only intends to avoid the practice of those NGOs that used to claim such utilization made out of corpus donation for prescribed threshold of mandatory 85% application of income. So now, such application be no more considered for the prescribed criteria of 85% application and will be allowed only in the year in which the corpus is reinstated to its original amount by depositing back the utilized amount from the other contributions. So to summarize, corpus donations should henceforth be earmarked and invested separately. It's better if not mixed with the general or non-corpus fund. Corpus donations have to be kept invested only in the modes specified under section 11 subsection 5 and it's important to note here that bank balances and investment in immovable property are also in the list of modes specified under the said section. Corpus donation can be utilized towards the charitable objects but such expenses shall not be considered as an application of income to meet the prescribed threshold limit of mandatory 85% application. The amount utilized out of the corpus donation shall be considered as an application in the year when the corpus is reinstated with the same amount from voluntary contributions. Any shortfall in the investments out of the current corpus donations shall be added to the total income of the organization. So I hope I have been able to clarify the concept of corpus donation, its taxability and everything related to it through this video. In my next video, I will talk about the practical aspects and difficulties being faced by the organizations and consultants related to corpus donation. Till then, keep our channel subscribed for more such videos and put the notifications on. Please visit our website to know more about NGO Enabler. For any clarifications, feel free to contact us through email or comment below. Thank you.